Hi everyone, in this video we are going to discuss about how to solve the trigonometric equation of the form cosine of x equals cosine of alpha where alpha is a given angle. So essentially we have to find the possible values of x for this trigonometric equation. Here I have taken an example which is cosine of x equals 1 over square root of 2 which is equal to cosine of pi over 4 and for this example I have taken a unit circle and I have plotted the points p and q on the circumference of this unit circle where op makes a positive pi over 4 angle and OQ makes a negative pi over 4 angle with the positive direction of x axis. And in this case the x coordinate of P would be cosine of pi over 4 and x coordinate of Q would be cosine of negative pi over 4 but they both will be equal to 1 over square root of 2. So the x coordinates are same in this case. Now let's talk about the point P. As we can see OP is making a positive pi over 4 angle with the positive direction of x axis. So can we write it as angle pi over 4 or maybe I can say 0 times pi plus pi over 4. Now if we rotate OP one full circle in the counterclockwise direction then what would be that angle? Well that will be 2 pi plus pi over 4 and if we rotate it one more full circle in the counterclockwise direction the angle would be 4 pi plus pi over 4. Similarly, if we rotate it one more time, one more full circle in the counterclockwise direction, the angle would be 6 pi plus pi over 4. So here we can see a pattern. The pattern is that the angle is an even multiple of pi plus pi over 4. So can we write it like this? Where of course n is a positive integer. And now let's talk about OQ. OQ is currently making negative pi over 4 angle with the positive direction of x axis. So can we write the negative pi over 4 as 0 times pi minus pi over 4? And then if we rotate OQ one full circle in the counterclockwise direction, this angle will become 2 pi plus negative pi over 4. So essentially that would be 2 pi minus pi over 4. If we rotate it one more full circle in the counterclockwise direction, the angle would be 4 pi plus negative pi over 4. So that would be 4 pi minus pi over 4. Similarly, if we rotate it one more time in the counterclockwise direction, the angle would be 6 pi plus negative pi over 4. That would be 6 pi minus pi over 4. Here again, we are seeing another pattern. The pattern is that the angle is actually an even multiple of pi minus pi over 4. So one of the solutions here, we already saw that it was an even multiple of pi plus pi over 4. And here we are seeing another solution for x, which will be an even multiple of pi minus pi over 4. So let's make a note of that. So we can write it as 2n times pi minus pi over 4 where obviously n is a non-negative integer. It could be 0 also or any positive integer. So, so far we have been rotating OP or OQ in the counterclockwise direction to find a general solution. Now what I am going to do, I am going to rotate OP in the clockwise direction and similarly I will also rotate OQ in the clockwise direction and then we will see how the angles are forming. So first we will talk about OP. OP is currently forming a positive angle of pi over 4. So I am writing pi over 4 and also I am adding a 0 times pi with that. And now if we rotate it one full circle in the clockwise direction that angle would be negative 2 pi plus pi over 4. If we rotate it again one full circle in the clockwise direction the angle would be negative 4 pi plus pi over 4 and we are already starting to see a pattern here that it's looking like a negative even multiple of pi plus pi over 4. So from here we can say that the pattern is looking like 2n pi plus pi over 4 where n is a negative integer. Similarly, let's try to rotate OQ in the clockwise direction and see what are the different angles we get. Right now OQ is making a negative angle of pi over 4 and we can write it as 0 times pi plus negative pi over 4 which is 0 times pi minus pi over 4. Now if we rotate OQ one full circle in the clockwise direction what would be that angle? Well we will be adding a negative 2 pi angle with it so that would be negative 2 pi and then plus negative pi over 4 that is minus pi over 4. Similarly if we rotate it one more time in the clockwise direction we will be adding another negative 2 pi with it so that would be negative 4 pi and then plus negative negative pi over 4 so that would be minus pi over 4. Now here the pattern is looking like it's a negative even multiple of pi minus pi over 4. So let's make a note like this. Now let's look at these four green boxes carefully. In the first two green boxes we see that the general solution for x is looking like 
2n pi plus or minus pi over 4 where n is a positive integer. Now in the next two green boxes we see that the general solution of x is looking like 2n pi plus or minus pi over 4 when n is a negative integer. So that means the general solution can be written as 2n pi plus or minus pi over 4 for both negative integers and positive integers and of course as well as 0 we have seen some values with 0 also. So then finally I am going to write the solution like this 2n pi plus or minus pi over 4 where n is an integer. It could be positive, negative, 0 everything will work and that is the general solution of x for this particular example where cosine of x is equal to 1 over square root of 2 which I have written it as cosine of pi over 4. Now if we replace pi over 4 with alpha then what can we say here? Well if I replace pi over 4 with alpha then it's going to look like this. I am simply going to erase this pi over 4 in the pink box and I am going to call it alpha. So this is the general solution of cosine of x equals cosine of alpha. For that equation the general solution of x is actually 2 n pi plus or minus alpha where n is any integer positive, negative or 0. Let me make a quick note here that this is the general solution for the equation cosine of x equals cosine of alpha where alpha is a known angle it's a given angle so in that case the general solution for x would be 2 n pi plus or minus alpha where n is an integer so this was the geometric or you can even say trigonometric way of proving it from the unit circle diagram. Now we are also going to try and derive the same general solution using pure trigonometry. Let's try that. First I am going to write the equation which is cosine of x equals cosine of alpha. Of course alpha is a given angle, known angle. Let's bring cosine of alpha to the left hand side then we can write it as cosine of x minus cosine of alpha equals 0. Now we are going to use the formula for cosine of c minus cosine of d which which is kind of like this. It is negative 2 times sine of c plus d over 2 times sine of c minus d over 2. I have already created a separate video on this. I have shared the link in the description. Feel free to watch that video. There I have proved this thing. So we are going to use that same formula here because here also we have the similar looking form. It's cosine of something minus cosine of another angle is equal to 0. So we are just going to factor it using this particular formula and once we are able to factor it then solving the value of x is very easy. So we can write our original equation like this. We can say this is definitely equal to negative 2 times sine of x plus alpha over 2 times sine of x minus alpha over 2 and all of this is equal to 0. Now if we divide both sides by a negative 2 we are going to be left with just this pure two factors here that would be sine of x plus alpha over 2 times sine of x minus alpha over 2 is equal to 0 and from here we are going to get two solutions. Well let's see how they look like. The first one would be sine of x plus alpha over 2 is equal to 0 that is one of them and the other one would be sine of x minus alpha over 2 is equal to 0. In the first video of solving trigonometric equations we have seen that when the sine of any angle is equal to 0 then the general solution for that angle is actually n times pi. So now I am going to use that same formula here for each of them. When sine of an angle is equal to 0 the general solution for that angle is n times pi. So now let's use that concept here. So here we can say from the first one from this one we can say right here I am just kind of denoting like this with a downward arrow that x plus alpha over 2 is equal to n times pi where n is an integer and from here you can clearly see that x plus alpha is equal to 2 times n times pi and then from here we can say x is equal to 2 n pi minus alpha and then from the other one from this other factor what do we get? Well here again we can say x minus alpha over 2 is equal to n pi and from here we can say that x minus alpha is equal to 2 n pi and then we can say definitely x is equal to 2 n pi plus alpha. So we got two solutions for x and if we combine them we can write them like this 2n pi plus or minus alpha where obviously n is an integer it could be a positive integer, negative integer or 0 but n is an integer. So that is the general solution of x when we solve it using pure trigonometric formula. And now if you compare this with the previous one that we derived you will see that they look identical. Now look at the two pink boxes there. One pink box up there 
another ping box down below here they look pretty much identical so no matter which way you derive it you are going to get the same general solution for x and the value of x will be equal to 2 n pi plus or minus alpha for the equation cosine of x equals cosine of alpha where alpha is a known or given angle let's take another example real quick let's suppose we have an example like this where cosine of theta is equal to one half we have to find the general solution for theta now can we write this one half as cosine of 60 degree which is cosine of pi over 3 now using the formula we can say well then theta will be equal to so from here we can say theta will be equal to 2 n pi plus or minus pi over 3 in place of alpha we can simply use pi over 3 where of course n is an integer and that is the solution for this trigonometric equation i hope everything made sense thank you for watching see you in the next video